Hi, Alan Stratton from Maswood Turns. I, in the wood exchange at our club, I got two pieces of this wood. I'm not exactly sure what kind of wood it is from the bark, but from the color of the wood, it kind of looks like poplar. So until somebody corrects me, I'll call it poplar. But it smells pretty moldy. But so I wondered what I could do with this piece of wood. I looked at that bark and said, that's way too much bark. And so I pried off the bark, being very careful not to damage the wood. And then I looked at that wood and I saw some beautiful texture underneath that bark. So, okay, what can I do to maximize that? Well, how about a treat bowl while we're playing games at the table? Other bowls tend to get knocked over and such, so why not make it big on the top, big on the base, can't get knocked over, but it still can hold plenty of treats. So let's make this natural edge treat bowl out of this poplar. I received this wood from one of my wood turners clubs. It looks like it has come from a larger log that someone has cut out the middle for a nice bowl blank. This looks like the outer slab, but still seems to have some pith. Hmm. It has limited depth and a lot of heavy bark. I'm wondering what I can make from it. To me, the bark is too heavy relative to the rest of the wood. I chisel it off, staying in the bark and gently hand peel off the remaining cambrium layers. Then cut off the ends at the bandsaw. With the bark off, I've made up my mind to maximize the amount of natural edge for this project. But little else is firmed up. At the lathe, I've mounted a threaded wood faceplate. I am pressing the wood with the bark side opposite the headstock. No glue for this one. The only thing I want to do now is to cut a mounting tenon on the bark side of the wood. I only want to create a tenon with a flat around the tenon. No other wood has to be removed at this time. I'm reversing the wood now into the chuck for a more secure mount. Using my bowl gouge, I'm first cutting the bottom to have a flat surface. Then start working on the corners. Between the squareness and the natural edge, this is tough going. My focus is to hold the gouge steady and rotate it to find that sweet spot. There is no sweet spot, but I do decide to have a fairly sharp angle from the bottom for the side and to minimize the side on the narrow side. I hope that makes sense. Next, I'm working the bottom to have an expansion mortise, a rim to set on, relief from that rim to the mortise and a little relief outside. A box scraper, smaller spindle gouge, and my skew are my best tools now. Then a lot of sanding, but very little with the lathe running. With the sanding done, I take a measure for the bottom thickness. I don't want to blow through that mortise in the bottom. Now for hollowing. It's a bit awkward, but I'm keeping the live center in place for a bit of security. After removing most of the wood and several stops to measure the bottom, I knock off the center nub. Then I can take the final strokes to finish off the bottom. The wood is still somewhat wet, but I'll soak it in walnut oil anyway. Whoops, I neglected to sign it. I'll use my Dremel engraver. Then hand sand it and finish wiping off the oil. My bowl is not a typical shape, but it is intentional. With the shallow wood and the texture that I found under the bark, I wanted to maximize that texture. I figure this is a great shape to use for treats while playing games. 
It will hold a lot of M&Ms, but not be easily knocked over and spilled. There is a risk that it will develop cracks from drying. That will be okay. Meanwhile, I'll wrap it in craft paper to minimize the drying stress. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, tell your friends, and send me your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video. Please wear your full face shield anytime that lathe is running. Until next week's video, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.